The US operates more than 10 aircraft carriers, making it the largest operator in the world. Aircraft carriers are used to transport aircraft. The course carrier deck, similar to asphalt, must be cleaned of lubricants and oil by routine workers. This also aids the removal of any debris that can be harmful to aircraft engines. In addition to supporting and controlling aircraft that carry out assaults against aerial, maritime, and land targets that pose a danger to the freedom to use the sea, aircraft carriers carriers also engage in sustained power projection operations in support of the American and coalition forces. With its enormous anchors which weigh 30,000 pounds, the chain's links each measure 1,440 feet in length and weigh 136 pounds. In this video, we'll discuss how these aircraft carriers deal with intrusive elements while I'm sure there are many intricacies that take place behind closed doors. Hello and welcome to this episode of High Technology. In this episode, we will talk about what goes behind US aircraft carriers in dealing with incoming elements. If you enjoy contents like this, then I'm pretty sure you'd be interested to subscribe and click that bell button to be notified when we upload fascinating videos like this. On an aircraft carrier, a staff of 5,000 sailors and members of the air wing can put in a full day's worth of work, working anywhere from 10 to 15 hours. Because working conditions are so cramped and risky, sailors are required to maintain a constant state of vigilance. Sailors will use a sledgehammer to remove the pin that are holding the anchor chain in place. When anchors are hauled up, the chains are given a quick rinse in order to remove any excess salt and other foreign contaminants. Carriers are capable of traveling to any location in the ocean in a few weeks because of their maximum speed of 35 knots, which is equivalent to 40 miles per hour or 64 kilometers per hour. At this time, the United States maintains a total of six carrier groups that are strategically located all over the world and are always prepared to take immediate action. To start, let's find out how they manage aircraft to land on aircraft carriers. This goes to show that not all the work is done by sailors alone. They would also need the full cooperation of the Navy pilots in order to have a successful operation. The flight deck's runway is only around 500 feet long, which is insufficient for the heavy, fast aircraft that fly on American carriers. Each aircraft needs a tail hook, which is exactly what it sounds like and is attached to the aircraft's tail in order to land on the flight deck. The objective of the pilot is to catch the tail hook on one of the four arresting wires, which are strong cables made of high tensile steel wire. The arresting wires are linked to hydraulic cylinders below deck at both ends and stretched over the deck. If an arresting wire catches on the tail hook, it is pulled out, and the aircraft comes to a halt as a result of the hydraulic cylinder system absorbing the energy. A 54,000 pound airplane traveling at 150 miles per hour can be stopped by the arresting wire system in a 315 foot landing space in only 2 seconds. The pilot has access to a larger target area thanks to the four parallel arresting lines that are spaced around 50 feet apart from one another. As a result of the fact that the third wire is both the safest and most effective target, pilots are shooting for it. They never aim for the first wire since it is in such close proximity to the edge of the deck and may be easily damaged. If they approach the first wire from too low of an angle, they put themselves at danger of easily colliding with the ship's turn. It is fine for a pilot to catch the second or fourth wire, but in order to advance in ranks, the pilot must be able to capture the third wire on a consistent basis. Depending on their varying fuel levels, the waiting plane's landing sequence is determined by the Carrier Air Traffic Control Center below deck. The pilot of the aircraft departs from this landing pattern and moves in the direction of the ship's turn when it comes time to touchdown. Through radio communication and a group of lights on the deck, the landing signals officer assists in directing the aircraft into the landing zone. The LSOs can wave him off or in other words, send him around for another attempt if the jet is off track by issuing radio commands or turning on other lights. After the hit, the pilot will not reduce speed and order to bring the aircraft to a complete halt. Rather, 
he or she will instantly increase engine thrust to their maximum levels. If the tailhook fails to catch any arresting wires, the aircraft needs to be moving at a speed that allows it to take off again and circle back for another attempt. This may sound like a contradiction, but is necessary because the landing runway is tilted at an angle of 14 degrees with respect to the rest of the ship. It is possible for bolters like this one to take off from the side of the ship rather than crashing into the planes that are located at the other other end of the deck. As soon as the plane lands, it is removed from the runway and chained to the side of the flight deck. Aircrafts that are not in use are always firmly fastened to prevent them from moving when the deck moves back and forth. Just as you thought that the intricacies of this operation is over, you're wrong. Because this would entail that sailors would also need to be prepared for the aircraft carrier's takeoff when the pilot gets ready to leave for a mission. Up to four catapults can be utilized sequentially for a quicker takeoff. With the help of these catapults, a 45,000 pound airplane can accelerate from 0 to 165 miles per hour in under 2 seconds. Up to 80 F-18 fighter jets can be carried on each carrier and launched from it. The only other country to have built a nuclear powered carrier is France. Transferring people and supplies to carriers is frequently done with the MH-60 Seahawk. The flight deck crew must be ready for a variety of unforeseen situations such as raging aircraft fires. They have a ton of safety gear available for use during takeoff or recovery operations. The flight deck has a tiny fire truck, nozzles leading to water tanks, and an improved fire extinguishing substance called aqueous film forming foam. Now I know you would assume that the staff would immediately clean up after every flight given all of these incidents, but you'd be mistaken. Aircraft carriers must be meticulously hand cleaned, washed, and rinsed at least once a week with a special compound that also also helps to prevent corrosion. Corrosion poses a major hazard to both ships and aircraft because of the constant at sea climate. Therefore, a dedicated corrosion control team is presented in each aircraft squadron. All of these people's planes receive numerous applications of sealants and special corrosion resistant paint. They remove panels and conduct several routine inspections, always keeping an eye for corrosion and repainting any exposed parts. When cleaning the carrier, each person often has a designated station. They collaborate on cleaning together and when they say cleaning, they actually mean cleaning. They thoroughly clean each and every crevice. They must always be sure to clean their designated stations before moving on to any of their duties. The stations are then checked by a division commander so they should really make their stations spotless. The anchor is one of the most challenging parts to clean. Given its weight, it would really give sailors a hard time cleaning it. On board, the situation plays out as follows. The sailors heave the anchor chain and handle it as if it were a chain dragon. A sledgehammer is used by one of the crew members to remove the pins that are holding the chain in place. Once the chain has begun to move, it is crystal clear that it will be extremely challenging, if not impossible, to halt it in an emergency situation. In the event that the first mate somehow becomes linked to the rapidly moving chain, the second mate is holding onto a strap that had been tied to his back. To stop corrosion, the anchor is first washed with a fire hose as it is raised. As the chain wraps around the anchor, the windlass is utilized to control and constrain it. A thick layer of marine paint is typically used to coat chains in order to prevent them from rusting. After discussing all of that, we should really go into detail regarding all of these aircraft carriers. After the $12.9 billion aircraft carrier, USS Enterprise Ford, the first ship in the first new class of aircraft carriers in 40 years, is expected to embark on her first international voyage in 2022. The requirements for anchor chain lengths range from literal warships to the largest ships, such as the USS Nimitz class and the new USS Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carriers, which are each 100,000 tons at first depending on the size, weight, and the type of water the warship will be operating in. The two anchors of the Nimitz class weigh 30 tons apiece and are attached to 12 shots of chain, while the shackles of 180 fathoms are 1,080 feet long. The 333 meter long Nimitz class is the longest link in the network. The long the longest chain starting with the USS Gerald R. Ford is currently found aboard the new class of aircraft carriers. The steel linkages add up to an additional 10 or more tons when aboard. Weighing around 
164 kilograms each. This new class chain's length is 1,440 feet. The equipment number which is based on the displacement of the ship, the maximum height and breadth of the ship, and the projected lateral surface area of the ship is used to calculate the size of the anchor necessary for all ships, not just warships, as well as the length of anchor chain required. Additionally, they have drastically reduced the weight of this new class anchor, cutting it in half to only 30,000 pounds or 15 tons. The USS Nimitz CVN 68's boat Swain's mates became the first crew of sailors to unhook an aircraft carrier's anchor and chain without using outside help. A 190 foot length of chain weighs 20,500 pounds overall and is made up to 57 links that each weigh 350 pounds. An anchor weighing 60,000 pounds may be supported by 12 shots of chain. The removal of the Nimitz anchors and chain is no easy operation, especially given that the average person weighs less than 200 pounds. One of the two aircraft carriers in the Royal Navy's Queen Elizabeth class, the first of the Royal Navy's two Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers. The HMS Queen Elizabeth was launched in December 2017 and received her first commission in December 2019. HMS Prince of Wales followed suit. Both vessels are 280 meters long and have a displacement of about 65,000 tons. Up to 40 rotary and fixed wing aircraft can aboard the boats. They can board 4 Merlin helicopters and 36 F-35Bs. These ships have the newest technology and automated systems on board, and just 679 people are needed for a combat mission. With all this info by now, you can come to realize how complicated it really is for the aircraft carriers to withstand all the challenges as they are the centerpiece of the battle fleet. Known to be the most valuable sea-based asset, it takes a lot of courage and professionalism when you are tasked to operate in a carrier. And that ends today's episode. As always, thank you for watching. If you found this content informative, be sure to give this video a like, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be the first to see our upcoming videos. Again, this is High Technology, see you on the next one.